Hi there, welcome to one of our series of videos on financial economics. We're looking at how commercial banks create credit. And I think it's really important to take from this short video the difference between the textbook view of what banks do and the reality of what a commercial bank does. The textbook view is that banks are pathetically dependent on savers for money. Uh, they have to rely, first of all, on attracting deposits of cash from a household saver or small business. And once that money is safely deposited in the bank, uh, the commercial bank can then choose to keep a proportion in cash and then lend it out to somebody who needs the money. Uh, the argument is that banks then, first of all, receive the deposits and then lend it out to businesses, thereby allocating money between alternative investment projects. This is a very, very old fashioned view. It's not how banks create money. Banks do not need to attract deposits to lend money. How does a modern bank create credit? It does it really simple. It extends a loan to a business or a household. Okay, that's how they create credit. Banks do not need to attract deposits from savers to do this. The old textbook view is simplified uh, and it's wrong. So, for example, when a bank such as HSBC or Barclays or, or Royal Bank of Scotland, when they make a loan, uh, maybe somebody's taking out a mortgage to buy a house, maybe a business is taking out a, a loan to finance expansion, for example, all the bank does is it simply credits their bank account with a new bank deposit of the size of the loan or the mortgage. As soon as that is done, new money, new credit is created. That is how banks create credit, by giving out loans. Okay. Indeed, as the Bank of England says, banks making loans and customers repaying them are the most significant ways in which bank deposits are first created and destroyed in the modern economy. The key to understanding that banks are not necessarily wholly dependent on savers is to think about the commercial bank's balance sheet. On the left hand side of the assets, essentially money owed uh, to the bank or owned by the bank. Um, so when they extend a loan, they're creating an asset and banks, of course, will hold other assets, including in liquid form. The liabilities are the key sources of funds for the banks to be able to engage in their profit seeking activities. So, yes, it's important for banks to attract retail savings deposits, but they don't necessarily have to do that. There is a wholesale market. There's a wholesale funding market. So banks can borrow money from other institutions, including other commercial banks. And of course, crucially, banks can raise fresh equity through the issue, of, through the issue or sale of shares if they want to increase their, their capital base. Now, it is the case in the UK that retail banks, uh, commercial banks such as Barclays, rely heavily on retail funding. So they, 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 you know, they do rely on commercial deposits, but they don't need them necessarily to lend money out. Typically, the banks will offer a higher interest rate on the deposits that people put in the bank account um, than um, the longer that those deposits are there. So if you're prepared to save with a bank for a length of time, um, or put money on deposit rather than money on immediate site withdrawal, you'll get a better rate of interest. In that sense, the saver is getting a better interest rate for sacrificing some of their liquidity. This chart shows the annual growth of loans and overdrafts in the UK for uh, the last seven years from June 2010 through to the summer of 2016. It's the annual 12 month growth rate. The main high street banks covered in this data are Santander, uh, Barclays, HSBC, Virgin Money's in there, Lloyd's, RBS. Notice, for example, in 2010, 11, 12, 13, the annual growth of loans and overdrafts was negative. Essentially, what we're seeing there is a, a shrinking of the total amount of lending uh, being done to personal private sector customers. This raised all kinds of questions about whether banks were becoming more risk averse, uh, were becoming less willing to lend out to people. And of course, it followed the, the recession of 2009 and the global financial crisis. It's only been in the last couple of years that the growth of personal loans and overdrafts has started to recover again. 
And uh, one of the reasons why banks became a little bit less uh, happy or a bit more reluctant to lend out was the, the rise in non-performing loans. So this, this chart shows the ratio of non-performing bank loans, loans that are not being paid back in whole or in part, to, to total loans in the UK. 2007, the ratio was only 0.9%. 99% of bank loans are getting repaid. But following the beginning of the global recession in 2008, this uh, more than doubled to 1.6% and then to nearly 4% in 2010 and 2011. It's starting to fall back now as, as sort of economic conditions return to a degree of normality. But uh, the, the global crisis was clearly a major shock to both the willingness and the ability of banks to extend loans. The key point is that how do commercial banks create credit? They create credit by creating loans, a loan, an overdraft, a mortgage. Uh, that's how they create loans. They don't necessarily need to attract savings deposits in the first place to do that.